Hey everyone, it's Dan here on The Castaway Couple and today I'm very excited to introduce my incredible wife who will be diving into an important topic. Uh, we're going to be taking a closer look at the stark contrast between the economic landscape of the past and the present, specifically focusing on how a single household income was able to sustain an entire family and pay for a mortgage years ago, amongst other things, compared to the challenging reality of today. My wife will be sharing some eye-opening statistics and shedding light on the decline of the middle class economic position. Um, she will be highlighting the widening gap between housing prices and wage growth here in Australia specifically. It's an important discussion that aims to provoke thought and provide valuable insights into the state of our economy. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand it over to my wife to delve into the details. Take it away, honey. Mabuhay mga kaibigan! Jan here and a castaway couple. Sana ay makatulong sa inyo ang video na ito dahil ibabahagi ko sa inyo ang mga opisyal na impormasyon na galing sa mga statistics ng Australia. Kasama na rin ang aking sariling pananaw sa buhay sa Australia bilang isang Pilipino. Minsan or kailan ba nating naisip kung gaano kalaki ang pagbabago sa loob ng tatlong dekada? Ngayon, Ating tatalakayin ang malalim na pagsusuri sa ating ekonomiya, paghahambing ng nakaraan at kasulukuyan. Handa na ba kayong malaman ang nakakabahalang katotohanan tungkol sa pagbagsak ng middle class at ang, pag ang patuloy na pagdami ng mga hamon sa mga pamilya? Ito ay kwento hindi ng progreso kundi ng ekonomikong paghihirap at kawalang katarungan. Kapag sinabi nating noong mga unang panahon, ang isang solong kita ng pamilya ay sapat upang suportahan ang buong pamilya ng komportable. Hindi karaniwan ang ideya na ang iisang nagtatrabaho ay kayang tustusan ang kanilang mga mahal sa buhay at makabili ng bahay na may mortgage. Subalit kung titingnan natin ang kasulukuyan, malaki ang pagbabago, ang pagpatuloy ng pagtaas ng gastusin sa pang-araw-araw ng pamumuhay. Ang pagtaas ng halaga ng mga bilihin at ang patuloy ng pagbagsak ng sahod, ito ay nagdudulot ng malaking kahirapan sa mga pamilya. Lumipat ang pasani ng responsibilidad sa pinansyal na humahantong sa malakas na pagdepende sa dalawang kita. Well, suriin natin ang merkado ng bahay. Sa loob ng tatlong dekada, napakalaki ng pagtaas ng halaga ng mga bahay na malayo ng lumampas sa paglago ng sahod. Ang pangarap na magkaroon ng sariling bahay na dati ay kayang maabot ng marami, ngayon ay tila isang pangarap na mahirap abutin. Ang pagtaas ng halaga ng mga ari-arian ay mabilis, habang ang sahod ay, naghi na ay nahihirapang Magtumbas. Ang lumalaking agwat na ito ay nagpapalawak ng agwat sa pagitan ng mayayaman at ng middle class na nag-iwan sa marami ng na nawawalan ng tiyak na kinabukasan sa aspeto ng pinansyal. Habang ang middle class ay patuloy na hinaharap ang mga hamong pang-ekonomiya, mahalagang kilalanin natin ang pagkalunod ng pundasyon nito. Ang nababawasang kapangyarihan sa pagbili ng pagkalugi ng seguridad sa trabaho at patuloy na paglaki ng agwat sa kita ay nagresulta sa pagliit ng middle class. 
Ang dating matatag at maunlad na simbolo ng lipunan ay unti-unting nawawala. Ang mga epekto nito ay umaabot sa iba't ibang aspeto ng ating komunidad na naka-aapekto sa akses sa edukasyon, kalusugan, at ligtas na kinabukasan para sa ating mga anak. Mahalagang tanggapin natin ang mga katotohanan sa ating ekonomiya at itagawid ang pagbabago. Dapat tayo ay magsulong ng mga patakaran na nagtataguyod ng patas na pamamahagi ng yaman, patas na sahod, at pagkakatuon para sa lahat. Magsikap tayong buuin muli ang isang malakas at umaasang middle class kung saan ang isang sulong kita ng pamilya ay muli na namang kayang suportahan ang mga pamilya at ang pangarap na magkaroon ng sariling bahay ay magiging isang katuparan para sa lahat. Sumama sa amin sa paghamon sa kasulukuyang kalagayan at ipaglaban ang mas magandang kinabukasang pang-ekonomiya. That's it guys! I hope you like these videos. Thank you. All right, so there it is, guys. Um, presented to you by my lovely presenter here on the Castaway Couple, my wife, Jan. Um, but seriously, so final thoughts. Um, I mean, from the perspective of a Filipina, I'm sure it's a lot different than for a local that lives here. But we're going to be real. We're going to be honest with you here now. There's, um, yeah, there's, there's no script. This is raw. Um, if I was to choose personally, I prefer the Philippines a lot more. Um, not to say that, you know, we don't have a lot of problems here in Australia. We both earn quite well and we're able to sustain everything that we have and we're doing okay. But it's more about the time that we have to spend, the amount of sacrifices that we have to make. Um, and to be honest with you, we're not really interested in doing that anymore that's why we're making this big leap of faith to the philippines this is why we're pursuing that dream and that challenge this actually all started in a um a rural block that we had about 40 minutes drive from here in pilton we're actually going to do a video about that in the future give you a bit of history and give you a bit of insight into where this all started where our desire to go off the grid really began um and it had everything to do with, especially when COVID hit, I think a lot of people woke up during that time. I think a lot of them saw that the way that we're living, it's a very fragile and delicate system. We're heavily dependent we on dependent here. yeah financial systems on the banks. We're dependent on our grocery stores. We're dependent on everything that is digitally linked to us. And as soon as we can't access it or use it, if we get locked down, you know, our lives are basically over. If we can't work, we can't earn then we can't pay our mortgages. We can't go to the grocery stores and buy food. We can't fuel our cars. And it, it, it really is, um, it's almost emasculating. It makes you feel weak. It makes you feel like you really don't have a grip on your life. Um, whereas, you know, we've seen many movements, tiny house movements, people be building shipping container homes, alternative living. That's what I'm trying to get at is alternative living, which we know would make us happy and we've been pursuing that dream we've had blockages and and obstacles along the way but you know one thing leads to another where a window closes another one opens um and we believe that this is it we've got a good head start on the house in the philippines don't we so that's right um, it's standing the structure is there and honestly guys like if i had to choose this video by the way is not here to um bring shame or bring any bad or dark um, I don't know, what's the word to call it? Any kind of negativity against Australia. It's still a beautiful country. Scenically, we've got a lot of beauty here. We do have a lot of good systems and things in place, but I think there's also a lot of corruption, like in most countries. And whether it's deliberate or not, there is a massive segregation going on between the rich and the poor, and the middle class is diminishing, as I've mentioned in one of my previous videos, I believe. Um, and we're just not, we're sick of fighting an uphill battle. Um, we just don't want to keep sacrificing that time that we're sacrificing, you know, spending 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Um, as you've seen uh, with that spreadsheet and that breakdown that we did for you guys, you can see that you really have to work a lot to be able to have a lot, you know, or even have enough in this case. It's not the same as it used to be in the past. As you've seen in this very video, things have changed. So the prices of houses have gone up 10 times, but wages have only gone up three times since 1990, 1995. So in the last 30 years, which is exactly what this video showed you, um, you can see how much more difficult it is. So it's a great country, 
depending on your financial standing, your position, your connections, who you know, it's all situational. It's all it's all completely up to the individual and yeah, what your status is, what your position is. You can have a great life if you have a lot of money. It's a fantastic country. You can get things done quickly. Um, you know, everything is at your disposal, services, etc. It can it can go like that. But if you're somebody at the lower end of the economy, someone at the lower end of the population, um, it's it's not a fun life. There's not a lot of smiles and there's not a lot of cheer. So that's my perspective. I've chosen the Philippines. Um, I love the Philippines. I love the culture. I love the atmosphere. It's just different when you go there. And um, which reminds me, we're going there next month, guys. So stay tuned. We're going to be taking you along the entire ride. The whole journey will be showing you our home, like I mentioned in the um, video we did at Picnic Point. So we're going to be showing you details of that house, um, what we're going to be doing there, the cooling system, how it's been built, all the um, environmentally friendly and the self-sustainable systems that we're going to be implementing to truly be off the grid, to be self-reliant, have our own energy, our own water. Um, which reminds me, sorry to cooling. interrupt. No, go for it, honey. Sorry to interrupt, but which reminds me, if I may say, we've started also like a few um, installation in our Pilton, in our previous block. Yeah, yeah. We've hired someone to install the bore. Yes. Yeah, so, and yeah. you've installed the solar system there. Yeah, that's so. right. Which we'll be going down and showing you guys, like I mentioned a little earlier. So, yeah, you can really see how this whole desire has evolved and how we're not going to give up on it. And it's starting to materialize now. So this, this whole thing we're doing with our channel is another push, another step further to really be able to develop upon it and bring it to life. But... Um, what I wanted to say or ask you, honey, is so after we've been here for five years now living in Australia, when I proposed to my wife, she came back with me. Um, what has been your interpretation and your perspective of the way that we live here in Australia compared to how you would live as locals over there in Philippines, specifically in Ormoc City in Leyte? Well, I feel that um, the place, the environment are like cold not so many smiles, not so many hellos. It's just focused on work, going straight forward, getting the work done, earning the money, come home, sleep and do it again the next day. It's a repeat, a repeat cycle. Mm -hmm. So it's like you don't have time to um, make time for your family, make time for your friends, go out, have fun. It's just you're always working and wanting to earn more money. Which you have to, because in order to be able to put food in your belly and keep a roof over your house, a roof over your head, well, you hope there's a roof on your house, that would be bad. But, um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, you've really got to grind and you've got to work hard. You can't, you know, yeah, you can't just rely on the system or be dependent on it because then no nothing is going to help you here. And in any assistance you do get, it's, it's pennies on the dollar. It's really not enough. That, that's not a life. That's not even an existence. That's misery. Um, and it scales up the chain too. But our point is, we don't want to be slaves anymore. We've seen the movement, uh, you know, tiny house, Brian La Bryce Langston in mm -hmm. New Zealand. He's showing off, you know, showcasing all the shipping container homes and the trailer homes that people are doing and living in, you know, building them for $70,000 and they're done. That's their home and they're beautiful homes. Well insulated. They have all the amenities, cooking and cooling and toilets. And, you know, people have more time for introspection. They have more time for themselves, for their partners to, you know, to travel, to do the things that are really important. Not climbing a... A, um, not climbing corporate ladder where you're still only a number and a slave to the corporate ladder, to your job, to your career and to the financial expenses that come with that. The more you earn, the more you spend, you know, it's kind of like a sickness. We all do it um, almost involuntarily, but it, it happens because if we can afford more, we'll spend more. It's human nature. So to really be able to break out of those chains, you need a complete reset. You need to do a 180 degree turn to be able to wake up from it. What do you think of our idea? How, how do you think it's gonna go? Are we gonna be all right there? What's... <laughs> we will be all right, I'm sure. Like, if we, have, if we don't have any mortgage, and if we That's don't right. have any um, water bills, we tried to, to live like in a sustainable way where hmm. less bills, and then more time to each other, more time to family. And um, we own our time. We don't work nine to five, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. But yes, of course, we might, we, may, we might need a little bit of money, of course. You always need money. Yes, always need money to buy food, to um, 
fix some things in the house. Fuel the car, yeah, that's yeah. right. Replace a few things. But I mean, the less you need, the less stressed you are. And it's easier to find less money for your necessities than to find lots of money still for your bare necessities. And it scales so much that it's such a big gap between here and the Philippines. Um, which reminds me too, I mean, everything that we're doing here, like with the cooling system, some of this stuff is experimental. Some of this, I'm a professional, so I'm a solar installer, I'm an electrician. Um, I've been doing off-grid stuff for years. I've been doing solar installations for years. So I, guys, I've got you covered. I've got you absolutely covered for that. So stay tuned because I'm gonna be showing you in detail all the installations, what we're doing with the cooling system. Even though that's ex experimental, I know it's going to work. I've done my research and it's gonna be fabulous. And I think a lot of this stuff can really help you guys if you're looking to do a very similar thing you can jump on our channel and view our videos and like i'll go i'll go through it in incredible detail and we'll, we'll show them absolutely everything won't we we'll film it all and if you guys have any questions feel free to get in touch um, if you're in omok city lady get in touch i'll be more than happy to help um, yeah so we're, we're not just doing it for ourselves we want to document it so that it can really help you guys and you can do it we all can do it you know, there are people out there that have less idea, who are much older, who have still taken that leap of faith and still gone out on their own and built a camper van and gone and traveled New Zealand or, you know, and they're 50, 60, some of them 70, and that's how they retire, that's how they live, and they're not scared. So why, why should we have any fear at this age? You see people do that, well, no more delaying, no more postponing. We, we have to be to... less dependent to the system. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll be forever in, in prison. Can't All it takes is, you know, a tiny little thread to break and then Everything the whole collapse. thing collapses. Um, that's, that's not a way to live. That's not a way to live. Um, so yeah, that, those are our final thoughts. Um, if you guys have any of your own experiences, anyone that's thinking of coming to Australia from the Philippines or for any other country, migrating for that matter, please watch this video. If you think that, you know, if you have other opinions or if, if they differ, that's fine. Give us a comment in the comment sections below and let us know what you think. Um, this channel is not about insulting or degrading any country or anyone or any culture or anything. It's simply our perspective and what we've discovered to be our truth um, and more importantly, our desire. This is what we, it's not something we need to do. It's just something that we really want to do. We, we found that block of land, we bought it, we fell in love with the place, we fell in love with the atmosphere, it just felt different and we're just, we're just drawn to it, I guess you could say? I guess. That's your hometown, you love being there, your whole family's there, all her cousins. I don't have anyone here, I've just got my mum and my dad. I mean, I can always jump on a plane and come back, but my wife's got like 250 people there that she knows that she's related to. So, she spent the time here with me for five years, it's time for me to return the favour, not the favour, but it's time for me to, you know, Make that step, make that jump, and make that sacrifice for her now. Um, and I think, in general, we'll have a much better life. So, guys, join us. And, um, yeah, I really, really hope that you find this all fascinating and you might find it inspiring and insightful. So, there's plenty more to come and really appreciate your help, your support, your views. Um, yeah, it helps us create more content like this, and we really hope that it's useful to you. So we'll see you on the next one.